is not what you know, it's what you can prove. Shalom everyone, it's your boy G Dash the Prophet. I am back with a new exclusive movie breakdown by popular demand. This is what you guys chose, Tenet. Okay, now out of all movies, y'all chose this one because I know y'all love for me to work. Okay, but nonetheless, it is done, it is ready. So I'm gonna give you guys uh, a little snippet here of this breakdown and then you can check out the rest and see if you like it. Now, number one, the word tenet. Tenet, a principle, belief, or doctrine generally held to be true, especially one held in common by members of an organization, movement, or profession. So we see what the word tenet means. Now, just as an example of tenet, we can say, you know, the Freemasons, which is a movement organization, okay, they believe that Lucifer is light, okay? So this is something held by a group or organization, right? Another tenet can be, you know, the Christian movement or Christianity, they believe that Jesus is God. So that's another tenet for you. So now, Let's get into this uh, snippet here. We live in a twilight world. We live in a twilight world. And there are no friends at dusk. Now, in the beginning of the movie, he said, we live in a twilight world. We live in a twilight world. Hmm. What does he mean? Now, one meaning of that could be, you know, we live in a dark world. We do live in a dark world, you know, and we do live in a world where people worship, you know, the stars. Okay. <laughs> Another meaning can be uh, his partner, uh, Robert Pattinson. Okay. He actually played in a movie called Twilight. We live in a Twilight world. Which came out in uh, 2008. Okay. And in that film, he was a vampire a demon who's actually undercover. You know, they had werewolves, demons, and stuff of that matter, you know, in this film. And these people were basically among the normal people. So one can say, well, yeah, we do live in a world where you have demons, devils who are walking amongst us, okay? And they can be our, our teachers, okay? Our teachers, our leaders, our pastors, and so forth and so on. So yeah, we do live in a twilight world, a deceptive world, a very dark world. Now, in one part of the film, the brother, he was a CIA operative. He was working with the Russians, but he was betrayed. He took the pill, killed himself, He died, and then he was resurrected, okay? Just like the New Testament story of Jesus. Welcome to the afterlife. Hmm. Now, in another part of the film, you know, he said, I'm not the man, you know, they send to negotiate or make deals, but I am the man people talk to. I'm not the man they send to negotiate. Or the man they send to make deals. But I am the man people talk to. Again, when it comes to this Jesus character, you know, people are talking to Jesus. You know, they, they are talking to this, this idol, wood and stone. Okay? So, hmm. But I am the man people talk to. Interesting that they would have him say that. You know, but it's all a subliminal message because he is you know, metaphorically playing Jesus or they have him playing their allegory, Jesus. Okay, but here's the proof here. Bring some lid line gloves. Jesus, it's nuclear. Now, if you didn't notice, he called them Jesus. Okay, he said Jesus, he paused and then said, it's nuclear. Jesus. 
And now one would think this is just an expression. Yes, it can be used as an expression. But when it's done over and over, it is no longer an expression. It is a hidden message. And I'll give you an example of that. In the movie Bird Box, okay, the same thing. It was a brother. He was talking to the guy on the radio and he called him Jesus. And he paused, okay, and then said, you're ways away. Where are you? Don't answer that. Near Pike's Quarry. Jesus, it's nuclear. Here's another example. In the movie Roman J. Israel, okay, they were calling Denzel Jesus. Let me tell you about it, George. No, 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 no. Jesus, just stop. Roman, enough. Jesus, you're a ways away. Let me tell you about it, George. No, 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 no. Jesus, just stop. Jesus, it's nuclear. And they were calling him Christ. Oh, I don't have to explain any of this to you. You get it. Christ, you're going to be right in the middle of it. Christ, you're going to be right in the middle of it. Christ, you're going to be right in the middle of it. No, 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 no. Jesus, just stop. Jesus, you're a ways away. Jesus, it's nuclear. Is this a coincidence? No, it's not. What is the purpose here? Why are they doing that? The purpose here is that they understood that the so-called black people are the chosen ones, the anointed ones, okay? The messiahs or the Christ figures. They understand that. It wasn't about a single man who was the Christ. It was about the people, the people, okay? Because that term Christ, which means Messiah or Mashiach, means anointed ones. When you study God's law, the Most High's law, you will see there were many of the biblical people who were anointed were the holy ones okay king david saul solomon the levite priest these were all people that were anointed they were messiahs mashiachs so they understand that the thing they're doing here is holding on to their allegory which is there's just one single person who was a messiah who was an anointed one a christ but they understand it was the biblical people and who they are and how they look. Hollywood understands that. They put it in many films. And he accepts me. I'm Jewish. Hey, I'm Jewish. In many films. Okay, even this brother right here, the same brother from this movie, his last film, Black Klansman. Why haven't you bought into this? Why should I? Because you're Jewish, brother. The so-called chosen people. Okay, they were showing you that in there. Okay, when they were having this discussion, okay, and he was like, uh... Flip, you're Jewish? I don't know, am I? And everything was quiet. Another scene in that, in that movie, okay, they were talking about, uh, the Jews killed Jesus, okay? And then he made the racial slur. Promise Clawworth is a fucking Jew. Could have been worse. How so? Could have been a nigger. Okay, and then they put the camera on the brother. <sighs> they understand who the biblical people are, who the chosen ones are. They understand that and they put it in plenty of films. You're the chosen one. You take care of your mom and nanny here. Yeah? You a child of God. Harass us with your hands all over a woman in the guise of searching her. Call us everything but a child of God. So they're just making a mockery to hold on to their tenet, their ideology, their belief, even though they know the truth. Okay? And this is why they're having this brother portray these different parts of, in the film. Because they know who the biblical people are. Period. Even in the film Shaka Zulu, they had all the so-called black people chained up and they were talking about this child, this prophetic child. There's a legend, Lieutenant, amongst the native witch doctors of a child, a prophetic child. And then he said, you know, I never seen that child, but 
I see him in the eyes of the people. The people. I've seen that child farewell. Ah, not in flesh and blood. In the eyes of the Fingos. In the eyes of these prisoners. Because they understand who these people are. They know who these people are. They are the ultimate victims of recent history. If you'll favor my comparison, they are the wandering Jews of Africa. That's the hidden message for you. Anyways, there's many messages in this film. There are many things that I break down in this film. My breakdown is like almost two hours long. So if you would like to check it out, hit the link in the description of this video, or I can email you a DVD copy of this. Just email me at g-profit at gmail.com. On that note, I'm going to say peace and shalom. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove.